Welcome to this, our first service from Muthal and Trinity Gask and Kinkiel Parish Church on the internet. It's obviously not the usual kind of service, it's not the normal service, but as Nicholas Durfin said a few days ago, if life seems normal for you, you're doing something wrong and you should stop it. These are not normal times. I'm in the manse and you are at home, or you should be at home anyway. And I hope that you're keeping well. I hope also that you find some comfort, some hope and some strength from sharing this time together in worship, a very different kind of worship maybe that we're used to. But when the tide turns, as I'm sure it will, and when things get back to normal, as it will of course, we look forward to meeting together as a congregation in all the, the usual ways. The songs that we're going to share in today are obviously not live but they've been taken from recordings we've made of the church services that we've recorded over the last couple of years. The quality of the sound isn't always that great but all the more reason for you to sing as loudly as you can there at home. The words will appear on the screen. The first song we're going to sing is the 23rd Psalm, favourite Psalm. King David knew what it was like to go through difficult times. He spoke of the dark valley through which he was going, but he had encouragement in that dark valley because he had God at his side, the shepherd. David had been a shepherd. He knew what it was like to look after the sheep, and he himself felt being looked after in that difficult time in his life. We have the promise that Jesus is our good shepherd. He's given us the promise that he will never leave us or forsake us until the very end of time. So let's join together as we sing 23rd Psalm.
Let's join together now in prayer. Let's pray. Father God, King David knew you as the shepherd who was with him at all times, and especially in those times when enemies threatened him and darkness surrounded him. Our whole world is in the situation right now of being threatened by an invisible enemy. But we acknowledge that the greatest enemy is fear. You created this world. You fashioned our amazing bodies. You constructed us in such a way that when an enemy invades, our bodies respond with antibodies to attack and destroy them. You have provided enough food in this world for us all. You have given us each other in families and communities. Thank you for your loving provision. Thank you above all for your promise never to leave us or forsake us. May we know right now that you are at our side, never more than a prayer away. And forgive us for our fear and our lack of trust. Thank you for the increase in our community's supporting of each other. Thank you for the National Health Service and the amazing work it does in this country right now. And thank you for all the other essential workers who risk their health to keep us going. And help us, each one of us, to do our part. Hear us now as we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to uh, read now from the scriptures, Psalm 46, another of David's psalms. He writes, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea, uh, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord the desolations he has brought in the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen.
we're being told all the time that we're in the middle of an unprecedented situation. Unprecedented means there's no precedent. Um, that hadn't happened before. And we're trying to find our way through a new situation that we've never experienced before. I mean, who would have thought uh, that you'd be hearing of armed gangs in Hong Kong stealing toilet rolls? Well, part of the unprecedented situation is that we're all more or less locked down in our homes and only allowed to make essential journeys outside. But as a result of that lockdown, the chances of us actually catching the virus are drastically reduced. That's the whole point. So the problem isn't trying to avoid being infected. The problem now is just to try and get through the next few weeks. And that may be difficult, getting food, getting toilet rolls. Or maybe if we're um, not at work, finding the means to make ends meet, because we're not at work, uh, if we're earning, particularly if we're self-employed. And just the idea of being stuck in a house, if you've got lots of things to do and lots of hobbies, that's fine. But if you haven't, it's a long time to spend in the house. So that's the problem that we have just now. What can we do? Well, a telephone's a great thing. Phone a friend. And maybe a few people will, will phone you. And that's a way of keeping in touch and seeing how folk are. I think the telephone will be a lifeline. Social media, of course, for many people, is also very important. And if you're able and know somebody is in need and you're able to drop them a bag of messages on their doorstep, you don't have to go in, but that can make a, a big difference in somebody's life. I also think that to help us get through the next wee while, it is useful to think of the bigger picture. Put what we're going through in perspective. What I mean is, we have been here before. Not us personally, not in our lifetime, but we have been here before. Epidemics, plagues, pandemics, we've all been through it in history and survived and come out the other end. Take, for example, just a hundred years ago, there was what was known as the Spanish flu. Now, the world a hundred years ago had a lot less people in it than there is now, but they reckon that something like between, what, 17 and 100 million people were, were killed as a result of that. And uh, interestingly, it was largely young, healthy men. I've been reading a book called Gilead by uh, an author called Marilyn Robinson. It's about a, a pastor, a minister in America who, who preached during that time, and he says in the book, he preached for a whole year with, with a scarf tied round his face. In 1832, another epidemic in this country, cholera, was rife. I come from Dumfries St Michael's Parish Church, famous for the mausoleum to Robert Burns in the, in the cemetery around about it. There's another corner of the cemetery, maybe not so well known, but there's a mass grave for the victims of that cholera epidemic in Dumfries in 1832, 420 people were buried there. And at that time I expect Dumfries wasn't nearly as big as it is today either. Go a bit further back in history, and you've got the uh, Middle Ages. At the end of the 14th century, there was an epidemic went through Europe for four years, the Black Plague, the Black Death. And again, we don't know the exact figures. They reckon that something like maybe half of the population of Europe was wiped out at that time. Now, of course, let's get this in perspective. Coronavirus is certainly not the Black Death. 98 or 99 percent of the people who get it will recover. And many of them won't even know they've had it. The, the symptoms will be so mild. The reason we're in this lockdown is for that one or two percent who will suffer severely because they've got underlying health problems and the National Health Service needs to be able to give them the care that they need. If you go back even further into the history into Bible times, there were plagues and epidemics then too. But it's interesting when you read about them in the scriptures, it almost seems like these things could have been written yesterday. For example, the priests before they went into the temple 
to, to worship were required to, to wash their hands. And there's a very particular way in which they were to wash their hands. In the New Testament times, in Jesus' time, that washing of hands was required of everybody before they sat down to their, their meal. And Jesus was actually attacked by the Jews on the grounds that his disciples on one occasion had not washed their hands in a prescribed way before sitting down to their food. And Jesus, of course, replied to the Pharisees and the Jews saying, but you've got it all wrong. You think that outward cleansing means your, your heart is clean before God. And of course, God sees the heart. The heart is a very different thing from, from the outside. You've confused the outside and the inside and what God is more concerned about is what is inside without neglecting proper hygiene, of course. And then when you go back to look at the infectious diseases, uh, there were detailed instructions there in Leviticus 13, for example. Someone who had symptoms would go to the priest. The priest would say, uh, if he thought it was possibly an infectious disease, to go into what we would call self-isolation for 14 days. They called it quarantine. But 14 days also was the required time to be isolated. Then the person would go back to the priest and if the symptoms had uh, got better and the priest thought it wasn't an infectious disease, they could go back into their communities. Another biblical curiosity, <coughs> very current, <laughs> very uh, significant for the world that we're in today. In the Old Testament there were a list of animals which were clean for the Jews to eat, they were allowed to eat. And there was a list of unclean animals they were not supposed to eat. And the last of the animals in that list of unclean animals was the bat. Imagine if there had no been, been no bat soup on the menu in Wuhan. The world would be a very different place today. What does all this mean for us? Just that the Bible is not an irrelevant out of date book. And it's not just sanctified common sense it contains. I believe it's God's guidance for us to how to live a healthy and a good and a happy life. It's all there and it's been there for a long time. One other parallel between the gospel and the situation we're in today. We're in lockdown now because the whole goal is to save lives. Those people who are <coughs> in serious need of uh, health, uh, of, of critical care, intensive care, need to be able to be looked after. So the rest of us are in lockdown so that we don't get the virus and overwhelm the National Health Service. And almost anything is worth paying to save lives. So non-essential jobs, non-essential journeys, and it is a fact that, that some companies uh, and businesses will close and there will be shops that will, won't open again, unfortunately. And that's the situation because almost anything is worth paying to save lives. The parallel, in my mind, is very clear. God is interested in saving lives too. The most famous verse in the Bible, John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God also is prepared to pay anything to save lives, our eternal lives. He gave his only son and Jesus gave himself willingly on the cross paying his ultimate price that we might have forgiveness and pardon and the knowledge of the love of God in salvation. That's what God did for us. If we're going to get through these times, we need to see that bigger picture, to get things into perspective. And above all, I think we'll get the resilience we need if we have the assurance that there is nothing in this world or in the world to come, in the past or the future, there is nothing that can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let's pray. Dear God, all authority is yours, but you have given authority to leaders in, to protect and to guide us. Today we ask that you would give all our leaders wisdom, discernment, strength and resolve. 
keep them healthy, safe and rested, so that they can continue to guide us through this troubling time. Give our government leaders wisdom about what needs to be done to stop the virus and stabilise our economy. Give our spiritual leaders your discernment on how to meet people's needs as they continue to glorify your name and encourage the church. Give our medical leaders insight into how to stop the virus, strengthen their resolve and honour their hard work in creating a treatment for COVID-19. Give our civic leaders inspiration, courage, joy and strength to meet the needs of their communities and help us all as members of our communities to display courage, hope, generosity and kindness. And may the way we honour others inspire those around us. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>